So I'm back with my computer power supply and in the last video I was explaining how does it work and now I'm going to show you how to repair it and what are the most common failures. So let's go through it and see what fails most often. This fan is annoying so let's unplug it now. So the mains comes in and it goes into this interference filter and this one usually doesn't fail. Then it goes into a fuse and a fuse may fail for several reasons. If there is a short circuit of course the fuse will blow. Here you can see a good fuse. It's clear and you can see the wire in it. You can take it out of the holder. And the wire is visible. And if there is a dead short circuit the fuse will blow massively. And then it may look like this. It's completely black and you can't see through it. In a dead short circuit it may be even exploded like this. Sometimes a fuse breaks for no reason and then the wire is usually broken with no blackening. Then there is another interference filter which also doesn't usually fail and then we can see a bridge rectifier and this one may actually fail. One of those diodes may go short circuit. It's easy to test a diode using a multimeter. Set it to diode test and measure it. And it has a voltage drop of about half a volt in one direction and in the other direction it shows nothing. Let's check the next one. And it shows zero or almost zero. So this one is in short circuit. In both directions it shows zero. The next one is OK. There is a voltage drop and in the other direction nothing. And the last one. Almost zero in both directions. So this one is in short circuit. So there are two diodes failed. And you can also test a Schottky diode which is also short circuit. But sometimes you have to take it out to be sure. Or at least remove one leg. So the other components are not interfering with the measurement. And now I can check it again. And it shows some voltage drop in one direction, but not in the other direction. So this one is OK. The next part are those electrolytic capacitors. And electrolytic capacitors in general are the most common failure. They can sometimes go short circuit, but most commonly they develop a high series resistance, lose their capacity or even go open circuit. You can test it for a short circuit using a beep test. If it's ok, it doesn't beep or it beeps only for a very short time as it charges, like this. But if it shows a continuous beep, like this, it's in short circuit. You also definitely have to test the capacitors for a high resistance using a capacitor tester. You can't do it unfortunately using a multimeter. Unfortunately I have forgot my capacitor tester somewhere else so I can't show it now but a capacitor tester usually shows the internal resistance of the capacitor and if it's too high the capacitor is bad. And of course you can use the beep test to test the fuse. A bad one. A good one. A metal oxide varistor can also go short circuit. And when it does it's usually visibly cracked or exploded. You can check it using a multimeter and if it's ok it will show infinite resistance. The next part are the transistors on the heatsink. They actually may fail and they usually fail short circuit. Sometimes the failure is very apparent 
and sometimes you have to use a tester to test them. You can use a diode test to test it and a good one will show about half a volt voltage drop in both junctions. A bad one will show usually almost zero or zero. This one is bad. You can take the transistors from the heatsink and put new ones on it. There are two transistors in a half bridge and if one goes short circuit the other one usually goes as well because they are in series and if one is shorted the other one will switch into a short circuit and blow up as well. And it usually blows up quite violently. There is also the auxiliary power supply transistor which can also go short circuit and when it does its current sensing resistor also usually blows up and it can also destroy the auxiliary transistor or some resistors, zeners, capacitors and so. The electrolytic capacitors are the most common failure in general so there can be failure of those big ones and also those at the output but you also have some small capacitors here those two capacitors are in the base driving circuitry and if they fail the bases of those two transistors are not driven properly. They may blow up or the power supply can shut down at higher loads. There is also a lot of other electrolytic capacitors which may fail including this one in the auxiliary power supply. Another common failure is those diodes at the secondary side on the heatsink. There are usually three of them. They are double. They are two diodes in one package with a common cathode. So they have three legs and they look like transistors. The bigger ones look about like this. They have two cathodes and a common anode. They usually fail short circuit. You can check it using a diode test. And you can see a voltage drop and the other one as well so this one is okay if you see zero it's in a short circuit the 3.3 and 5 volt part is using a Schottky diode with a very low voltage drop the 12 volt part is using an ultra fast diode with a bit higher voltage drop almost half a volt and this one is also okay there are some low resistance resistors at the output which may interfere with the measurement. So when measuring those diodes or those capacitors, they can actually show short circuit even if they are okay. So sometimes you have to take them out to check them. And this Schottky diode at the output of the auxiliary power supply can also fail. The control chip may also be faulty but it's not so easy to identify. So if you have tried everything, tested everything, replaced everything and it still doesn't work, it may be the chip. And if it still doesn't work, you have to think out of the box. It may not be a faulty component, it may be a loose connection on the board. Something like this. The connections can break, especially at the parts on heatsink, because it is heavy. The failures can add up, especially on the primary side. For example, if this transistor goes short circuit, it will destroy this transistor. It may also destroy this bridge rectifier, this NTC thermistor and it will probably also blow this fuse. If you see a blown fuse, the problem may be a short circuit in the bridge rectifier or in the metal oxide varistor or in those capacitors or in those transistors or also in the transistor in the auxiliary power supply. Sometimes you can recognize a faulty capacitor without a meter just by looking at it. If you see a puffed capacitor with the top bulging out or something leaking out of it, it's always faulty. But sometimes there is a faulty capacitor without any visual effect. This one also seems faulty. So in this power supply the problem is in multiple faulty electrolytic capacitors. I will try to replace them and see. I will take the board out, 
there are four screws in the corners to get to the bottom of it and I will desolder the capacitors and put a new ones into it and we will see One is out, 2200 micro 10 volts, let's put new ones in it. And always take a close look at it, there is also a completely combusted resistor here. I can't read it, but according to my schematics it's usually 22 ohms. I will try to replace it, and this one is in series with the power of the chip. So is the chip in short circuit? This power supply is becoming tricky, but it's okay because I'm repairing it so that you can learn something. So I've got some 22 ohm resistors. It is red, red, black. I could replace just this resistor, but it will probably burn again because the short circuit is still present. And because this resistor is in series with the power of this chip, it's probably this chip what's in a short circuit. According to the datasheet, the ground is pin 7 and the power is pin 12. So let's try to measure the voltage drop of the chip from power to ground. And it is almost zero. So it seems the chip is in a short circuit. The same chip in remains of another power supply shows much more than this. So I will try to swap it. So the old one is out, new one goes in, and yes, this is a horrible soldering. So the chip is back and let's test it. Let's connect the fan back and let's test it using my test socket. It's basically a wall socket connected to mains via those two light bulbs. If there is a short circuit it will not trip the breaker and blow up violently. There are two halogen lamps, 300 watts and 500 watts. And there are two switches to choose one, the other or both. There is also a fan to keep this test box cool. So let's connect it to power and demonstrate it. When I short it out, there is no explosion, there is just a light bulb lighting up. Let's use it to test my power supply. Plug it in, switch it on, plug it in here, no explosion yet. Now I'm going to use my computer power supply tester with indication LEDs for each output. And now it, when I plug it in, I can see the auxiliary power supply on. And now let's turn it on. And it runs. You can see the fan running and all of those LEDs are on. All the voltages are present. So the power supply seems to be working. You can also use some car halogen lamps to test it at more current. It works. If you don't have any ATX tester, you can test it just by connecting the green wire with any of the black ones. Just like this. And it lights up. So just by connecting the green one with any of the black ones, you will wake it up from standby. So this repair wasn't the easiest one, but it's good because you can learn more like this. Normally I would probably trash it, but I wanted to show you that if you know how to look for the problem, you can always find it. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos.